let's hit the recording button what's up what's up ow all right i'm gonna get this right this time i'm gonna hit the recording button you can see my cute mic doesn't matter i think it's cute hey y'all what's up it's your sis ari and i am glad to be here with you especially on the youtube platform so glad i get to expand my audience and really try to be consistent this time around so i'm introducing the build my life series if you have me on instagram which if you don't you need to follow me and i'll add it somewhere around here Anywho, you are familiar with the Build My Life series that I would have on live, always invite a guest on a Friday and we would chop it up. Everything professional development to personal refinement and just being a more elevated you holistically. And we're talking physically, mentally, spiritually, emotionally, all the leads, okay? So this time around, I really wanna start on a launching pad of boundaries. This has actually been a conversation that I've been having as of late with a lot of my girlfriends, a lot of my guy friends, what are the boundaries that we have and how do we really dictate it? So before we dive into the seven points that I have listed, I really wanted to make sure that I emphasize why boundaries are so necessary. So I have my notebook here because you know your girl wanted to come direct and really fresh, make sure she came with the right points, okay? And we're going to chop it up. When boundaries are absent, so is respect. It's out the door. Matter of fact, it was never invited into the conversation. And that becomes a problem for you, my dear friend. Honestly, when you don't have boundaries, it's like you left your protective gear. So I don't really know how to swim. And if I ever get into the water, I'm gonna need a floaty, okay? Until I figure out how to swim. Great example. Because until I know how to swim, efficiently I'm going to have to rely on something that could carry me through that could be a safety guard for me boom 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 that's what a boundary is boundaries are protective gears so the why behind it all is when you need to ensure that you're protected that you don't get hurt that you don't oh my goodness why did they do all of this to me well what protective gear did you have up it's not to say that you always have your guards up but the Bible has a great way that it says it. It says, guard your heart, okay? Now there's more to the verse, so go read the verse. But the important part about it is you don't guard it because you're trying to have barriers so people can't come in. You guard it so that the wrong people don't come in and only the right people who crack the code can. So long story short, the why behind it to ensure that you have boundaries is to ensure that you have respect. Because without the respect, people can trump these boundaries and you can't get mad at them. You can only be mad at yourself because at the end of the day, you didn't set anything that could hold them back from trying to disrespect you. And sometimes it's gonna be unbeknownst to them, but that's all the result of you not putting up them boundaries. Cool, so now that we've established the why, we're gonna get directly into point number one. Point number one right here. Making yourself a priority translates to other people that you value yourself. And it's so important when people see that you prioritize you, your me time, your mental wellness. I have a good sis, Aureli, okay? She always says, oh, my mental real estate. And sometimes when I'm talking to people and I realize that it's just getting beyond the point of where I show that I respect my time, I start thinking of Aureli saying like, girl, your mental real estate, your mental real estate. And it's true. How much real estate do you have mentally to offer to people? How many people are you allowing to rent bits and pieces of your mind? Now you don't even have a home up in there that is your sanctuary for you to think because you're not prioritizing yourself. So all in all, make yourself a priority because when you do that, people are gonna say, oh, she values herself. I was talking to my good sis, okay? And she was telling me that, stop making yourself so available. Literally, I have a couple friends who say this so often in conversation. When you make yourself available for a FaceTime that's calling, oh, suddenly they're FaceTiming me. Uh, all right, hey girl, what's up? Now it's already two hours in. But because you did not already set the boundary to say, look girl, I got some things to do. I'm picking up your call. I'm just trying to let you know we got 15 minutes for this call or we got five minutes. Or hit that button on your iPhone that says, sends a message. Hey, not available right now. 
curate a message that's personalized. That sounds nice, okay? You still want to be respectful, but also translates to people. Ah, I can't really mess around with her time because guess what? She values herself enough to make sure that she accomplishes her goals and she's not allowing anything or anyone to interrupt that. So that's number one. Point number one, making yourself a priority is always going to translate to people that you value yourself. All right, this one is a practice, okay? And all of these are really practices that you have to put in your everyday lifestyle in order to, you know, perfect it. But this one, number two, is a heavy hit. No is a complete sentence. No is a complete sentence. It does not need any explanation. It does not need, no, but I can't, no, because I, no. No, it's just not feasible, no. And I feel that sometimes culturally, we come in a background, you know, me, I come from a Caribbean background, Caribbean Haitian household, gonna represent, okay? And it's always a, you can't really say no. And if you do, you have to give a proper reason and you better not just say no. You need to appropriately say, well, I don't think this is even that, okay? That is also a little on the edge. All of that to say, practice saying no. When you practice saying no as a part of your lifestyle, people are going to also understand that they can't push you to the edge for you to say yes to them. They know that they can't push you to go beyond your boundaries. And at the end of the day, your no without explanation shows that you're so self-aware with yourself or in yourself that you don't need to give a reason why, period. This is why it's so important to not always overgive yourself in conversation, especially it depends on who you're talking to. Be careful how much you tell about who you are, about your past, about your history. Take it from me. Literally, I have my friends who know me so well. Like, I am such an open book that I'll be telling everybody like, oh yeah, this, this, that, third, fourth, because I'm like, this might help them in their life. You know what someone told me one time? Let people buy your book to know your story. Mic drop. Literally, let people buy your book to know your story. All of that to say, no is a complete sentence that does not need any explanation. Boom. That's the story, that's point number two. Now number three really tag teams with number two, okay? I think all of them are really interconnected. Number three, exonerate yourself from imposed guilt, self-imposed and communally inflicted. Y'all, I was meditating when I wrote this down. I was like, mm, they gonna need this one. And this is so true. Release yourself from the guilt. After you say no, sometimes there's this sense of guilt and you feel the energy. You feel it. Some people, they're like, she just tell me no did that person just yes i did and stand in that no bro stand in that no and on top of that really 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 do make sure that you take care of your mental wellness back to number one prioritizing yourself because sometimes anxiety is going to overwhelm you and be like dang should i have said no oh my goodness what do they think that i mean look every day you're redefining yourself you're re-emphasizing your priorities you're re-emphasizing your boundaries and so making sure that you release yourself you exonerate yourself from all self-imposed because sometimes it's not even the people imposing that form of guilt it's sometimes us we're tripping in our mind like oh my goodness the anxiety's feeling up yeah god did not give us a spirit of fear god did not give us anxiety so like cut that out cut that out and sometimes that thing is gonna linger in your head so much if you keep feeding it stop feeding it whatever you feed will continue to grow whatever you water will always grow so feed something else yeah and communally inflicted guilt that's also something else sometimes you live with the people who guilt trip you sometimes you don't so if you do happen to live with it and it's like family or someone who is your roomie what you need to do is find practices to help you release your mind of oh they're probably thinking this go make some food go read a book start a youtube channel do a video Put something in your lifestyle that's going to help you be confident in your no and not guilt and trip yourself up with anxiety. That's point number three. All right, y'all. So point number four has really been a challenge since my adolescence, okay? And let me know down in the comments if you relate because I've always felt alone in this. Being someone's superhero and not just someone's superhero, 
everybody's superhero in their story. That is so problematic where I've always felt like, oh my goodness, if someone's in danger, I need to go rescue them. Funny enough, I had two conversations today with my good sister Relly and also Annie who had this conversation with Haitian Soup Blog. Shout out to Excelsior the brand and Haitian Soup Blog. Bow bow. And they had this conversation really about mental health, but then targeting being this superhero, always feeling like you need to save the day. And I forgot the terminology. Oh my gosh, I can't really say it here. But if I was being raw and honest, my girl, my sis, she said, you gotta stop being Captain Save a Chicken Nugget. All right, I'm gonna just say that. You fill in the blank. But at the end of the day, I was like, wow, that is so true. Like I'm over here, the person's probably underwhelmingly not caring so much about their situation and i'm here overwhelmingly caring about theirs and sometimes maybe they are encumbered with like so many things and they're like look i really need the help but you need to gauge for yourself how safe is it going to be for me mentally emotionally spiritually even physically for me to put this labor into this person's life what is it going to cost me? And I always think about it like this. What is the cost benefit analysis? How can I analyze this? You're gonna be an analyst today, put that hat on, okay? And how is this going to benefit them and me? What does it cost? And I think you should always do this in anything, be that a job, be that relationships with a partner, be that in friendship. What is that cost benefit analysis like? Now, I added a little bit more to it and in point number five, oh y'all, this was not even point number four. Oh no, this was point number four. Okay, so point number four is absolve yourself from the duties of being the superhero in everyone's story. So that's what I wrote down. And that's so important. Make sure you write that down, okay? Number four, absolve yourself from being the superhero in everyone's story. Cut that out. Exit stage left. All right, number five has got to be my favorite one because culturally, we say this all the time. Okay? This is so important. Y'all probably were like, wait, what she just say? She just switched it up on me. Don't let people play with your face. And when it comes to your face, I translate that as reputation and your time. Don't let people play with that because those are things, reputation you could redeem, but the fact that you have to even be a part of a redemption story is kind of like, come on, bro. But with time, you can't really redeem the time that you lost. Like, yes, biblically, the Lord said he's going to redeem everything that the canker worm and all of them took and destroyed. But if you really think about it, if I miss the time of June 30th at noon, there is no way I can go back into time, unless if there's a time machine, which I'm pretty sure they already have this and they're trying to, you know, hold this back from us. But all of that to say, I am like, you can't redeem the time physically, all right, and to add to that point, as much as you could redeem your reputation, you don't wanna to have to do damage control, especially when it comes to time as well. To add to that point, another thing that I put down is you don't have time to be the laughing stock. Neither should you ever be the laughing stock. People shouldn't have to turn around and be like, oh, ha, 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 like, prioritize your brand as an individual so much that you don't even allow people to mess with your face not this cute stuff and your face being time and reputation now i do have a sub point to this and oh my haitian girl yes i'm doing it for the zoes out here love your natural let me know if you know her because she is bomb she's also from new york city shout out to the brooklyn girls she's from queens i was born in queens tangent anyway she said someone's crisis is not your emergency and yeah, my girl, my sis, Relly, she said, example of voluntary, like, why are you constantly having to volunteer yourself? Like, stop volunteering yourself. If they didn't ask for help, cut that out. And that's something that I have to learn, like still learning this progressively as we speak. But now back to Love Your Natural, someone's crisis is not your emergency. And again, this is taking on the burden of other people. I feel like when you do this, you really keep up with the stigma of, as black woman, the strong black woman. And that is not something, especially for us ladies who are trying to achieve this soft version of ourselves, 
that could also be problematic but that's a topic for another day but when you want to achieve a more relaxed form of yourself in this lifestyle that you're in please be mindful that the crisis of other people is not your emergency someone's calling at 3 a.m you know you have work at 7 please prioritize your rest some people not even some people all people need to abide by the boundaries that you have and you know how you build those by putting on your protective gears that's also going to be another video on how to actually pinpoint the boundaries that you need to put down because that was something i had to learn and in this handy dandy notepad i've been able to write down a whole lot of those things so now we're gonna go on to point number six. Oh, 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 right before we go to point number six, let me also mention going out your way to solve someone else's problems. Please, I know some of us here are very good heart people. We want to be the rescuer of all these things. If you did not apply and get certified to be a fireman, do not go into the burning house. This goes without saying but I'm still gonna have to say it. If it is not something that you can do accessibly that doesn't put you in harm's way, odds are you probably shouldn't do it. Stop going out your way consistently. I would even ask the Holy Spirit, like, Lord God, sometimes we're not even consulting the Holy Spirit, like, Lord, Holy Spirit, do you want me intervening in this situation or do you have it? Because Father, you got all things. So do I really need to be the person to intercede? intercede in prayer and wait till the holy spirit gives you further notice otherwise chill figure out other ways to be a solution you know there's other ways there's other ways all right so number six i really love this and i know this is going to be a constant practice for everyone including myself and that is practice decision making without the opinions or the two cents of other people I always had this sense of indecisiveness and I remember seeing that theme as a child like literally down to what to eat and I know a lot of people have been challenged with this as well down to things to drink and as you get older now you're dating someone even down to the hey what do you want to eat or where do you want to go I don't know like I don't know you choose <laughs> especially in developing yourself as a woman or a man the highest version of yourself you ought to be more sure and certain in the things that you want, the things that you desire, the things that you need. So practicing the decision making without having another person's input is going to help you in figuring out, okay, what are the values that I have as a result of this decision making? What are the boundaries that I could start placing and implementing into my daily life that are going to be a routine that when someone asks me something, I won't even realize, but boom i say it like no mm -mm, and you realize that's a boundary that's even how you identify a boundary because it's become a practice it's become habitual in your life and it's like oh out of routine i already know what i want in accordance to my values okay so with that i have a sub point i put down cut out indecisiveness by practicing these things down to the small parts of your life you're probably going to the Walmart. Okay, let's just say Walmart or Target, whatever you want to go to Amazon. Which toilet paper should I buy? Should I buy Scott or should I buy that one with the big teddy bear? I don't know if it's called Bounty or something. Bounty's toilet paper, right? Or toilet paper, whatever. Which one should I get? You don't need to call Timmy, Tommy, and Joe to figure out, okay, so according to what you have at home, okay, Timmy has Bounty someone else has got now you don't even know which one to go to because they're both giving you reasons why to get the brand that they have at home you need to be sure in yourself to figure out you know what even if i haven't tried either or i'm going to make an attempt to just choose this one see how it goes and that's going to dictate whether or not i go back for the same thing or i try something new this again is how you should practice in different areas of your life down to the small things what do i want to eat today this type of pasta or that this bottle of water or this brand of water these are practices habitual practices that will become routine and will help to identify your values and will also further help you to put down these boundaries it's going to be a no-brainer all right so now we're winding down to point number seven 
the number of completion, and that is remind yourself and then remind people. While you do those, it's going to help reinforce, okay, these are my boundaries. And a sub point that I have here is that sometimes people might get tripped up and think the reason why you said no for a certain thing or yes to another thing, it was situational. It was because of a circumstance or it was because they're around this person. Remind yourself, is this something that I have as a boundary? If yes, I will remind you. Actually, that exceeds or is beyond my boundaries and I just don't have space. I don't even have the energy to allocate to that, okay? You like those SAT words? All right, let me stop. But honestly, when you remind yourself as if these things were affirmations, it's going to practice again in your mind, okay, yeah, not really, or mm, yeah, I believe so. When you do those things, people will be inclined to understanding what your non-negotiables are and also will understand what you're open to. So again, I wanna just make sure that I read this point because I wrote it down so neatly and need to reiterate it, why not? They may have been under the impression that the boundary was circumstantial or only towards one person in a particular event or situation. But this is why you've got to be self-aware. Recite and write. I would flip that around. Write and recite these things periodically, okay? Look over them and even be open to reimagining or redefining them depending on the season of life that you're in. Because one season of life might require you to have a certain form of boundaries that another season of life may be more flexible and open to different things. This is why, again, you've got to be self-aware, be conscious of where you are in life and how much you can put onto your plate. All right, these are your seven points, boo. So if you reach this part of the video, I wanna thank you for staying here for the seven points with Ari, Build My Life Edition. And I'm so glad for this series because I don't think there's gonna be an end date to this. I'm always gonna be here offering these advice. Let me know what you wanna hear next. These are the seven boundaries that each and every person should have. I'm gonna run them through real quick just so you have them because sometimes I know it's kind of overwhelming to have to go to each point and write it down. So listen up. Number one. Making yourself a priority translates self-value to others. Number two, no is a complete sentence without the need to explain. Number three, exonerate yourself from imposed guilt, self-imposed and communally inflicted. Number four, absolve yourself from the duties of being the superhero in everyone's story. Number five, don't let people play with your face, reputation and time, don't be the laughing stock. Number six, practice decision making without the need of input from people and their validation. Cut out indecisiveness. And number seven, remind yourself and people why enforcing these things or while enforcing these things. I hope this is really helpful. Let me know what you think. And if you need any help or any advice, hit me in my DMs. Let me know what you want to hear next. I'm so glad to see y'all. On and have a good night. Bisous.